and welcome back to the Open Bench Project. My name is Adam Zazara, and this is my entry into the Great Guitar Build-Off 2021. Uh, I have made a full-scale electric bass, PJ bass, uh, and it has been fully assembled now. Uh, I decided to do a dry run, a dry assembly of all the parts, make sure that everything sits where I want it to be, and to discover if there were any issues before I commit to sanding and a finish. There's no finish, it's not even sanded yet. She's got vocal cords. She can sing, the pickups are working. Everything's been loosely tied together in the back for testing purposes. I'm happy I decided to string it up beforehand because I discovered I needed a string tree here on the headstock. So I made a pretty rudimentary one. I'll be refining that shape a bit more. But it is time, almost time, to start sanding. The last thing I need to do is drill my screw holes for the pickups here. Oh. <laughs> I haven't bothered tuning or intonation yet. Uh, purely, I just wanted to see what this would do under tension. I haven't even adjusted the, uh, goodness, the action's out of control. <laughs> So I still have some more work to do. I gotta shape the nut a bit more. Then I need to start thinking about a stain, staining. I don't know if I wanna keep the body, this natural color. I think I'm going to be doing a starburst or a um, sunburst, that's the word. Not starburst, that's a candy. Uh, sunburst pattern. Uh, I have some Cordovan purple that should match the body very nicely. I think I'm going to be using clear acrylic for my back plates here. Have a nice tidy soldering job on the inside. And I've decided, curiously, to mount my jack on the back. It doesn't get in the way of anything. The, uh, the plug shoots up toward the, uh, the strap for hooking over it. And I am just Super pleased with myself so far. I, uh, I am very impressed that I have a functioning, playable, well, with a little bit of setup, a playable instrument. Welcome to my apartment. Uh, due to the small confines of this space, I, it's uh, difficult to find a shot angle to uh, get both the workspace and my face in the frame, so I hope you'll deal with just the workpiece for now. This morning, I am planning on applying some dyes to my, my finish here, or my, my body here, before I apply a finish. I did leave myself, it might be hard to see on camera here, a very thin, sixteenth of an inch, maybe, maybe less, 
faux binding around most of the edge. Currently, everything is sanded up to 400 grit. The surface has been wet down so the grain can raise up at least once. I'm gonna do that one more time before we begin. So I think I'll hop over to time-lapse. I'll wipe it down with water. I'll let it dry and we'll go from there. Well, I suppose I've wasted enough time thinking and plotting about how I'm going to do this, and I've come to the same conclusion every time. I suppose the definition of insanity is going back over it, expecting something different, but this, uh, this amount of redundancy that I've chosen to do has gotten me to this beautiful piece, so perhaps it's not all so bad. This is my first time working on a scale this large with the die, with the dies. So I really hope that I can keep the uh, the density consistent across a piece like this. Water. Feeling pretty good about this so far. Cautiously optimistic, we'll say.
the final product ready for finish got very classy faux binding all the way around I am so pleased it's finally time my favorite part of the build putting the finish on I'm choosing to use Waterlock's original sealer and finish coat. I've used this once before on a guitar and it built up a rather nice film and finish. Uh, it's a bit of a flexible finish so it's going to expand and contract with the wood so it's not liable to chip or crack kind of like lacquer is. It's very easy to apply, it's just kind of flood the surface, wait a little while, wipe off the excess 24 hours in between coats. However, I think you can get away with 8 to 12 hours with light coats that are wiped on. For the first coat, I'm going to be using a foam brush just to lay it on extra heavy and thick. Really make sure that all the pores can, or the pores can absorb as much oil as possible. Um, I didn't mention, uh, Water Loss is a tongue oil varnish blend, so it will dry and cure to a durable, thick finish. Been a few months since I last used this. I used Bloxygen to minimize the oxygen curing, and let's just see how well that works. Oh, beautiful! It's still very liquid and runny. Let me know that it hasn't started to cure. All right. <laughs> oh yes. So I've allowed the stain underneath the dye plenty of time to dry since I applied it this morning. So I'm not very worried about much of it pulling off with the brush strokes and applying the finish. And because this is a figured wood, you'll notice a lot of the, uh, a lot of the surface area is going to soak up that, uh, that finish very quickly. So I'm just going to flood the surface and keep applying more and more and more and saturate all the pores until they won't soak in anymore. That's my objective here. So just put even coats all the way around. Try to avoid drips really hard around the edges. Go to the back side now. That is just a gorgeous color. Shame it won't stay like this forever, but I'm okay with that. This will eventually turn into a very rich, reddish, purpley brown as it oxidizes and gets exposed to UV light. It hasn't fully uh, changed color since I last sanded, uh, but it will with time. It'll get more and more purple, more and more rich in the, or deep in, in that color until it doesn't, and then it'll start turning brown. And that'll be anywhere from a few months to a few years time. Absolutely stunning. I love it. How's it looking? So the end grain in particular is going to absorb a lot of finish. So I have to be mindful of the end grain of my boards and really make sure I soak those areas in particular. It's okay, I'm rolling on the edge right now. I'll do a, a last pass, pick this up. Hold the top a bit more. And it's important to work quick with, uh, with the water locks. Uh, when it starts to feel 
gummy when the, your, the brush is starting to pull on the surface. That's usually the time that I know that it's time to stop brushing and uh, it's time to start wiping off. That's when uh, I know that the finish is going to start curing soon and I'll leave some very ugly streak marks if I try and go push it past that point. So if I just keep going over the surface over and over again, it kind of refreshes the, uh, the time that I have available to me. Isn't that just astonishing? I am in love with this bird's eye maple. That figure has just completely come to life when I put on the oil. quickly put this in a, in a closet, we'll wipe down uh, and then we'll finish, put the finish on the neck and then we'll wipe this down. Alright, so we'll just wipe off all the excess. Nice. There's no, no pigment transferring to a cloth. That everything is nicely sealed in the wood. I'm not going to have to worry about this color moving at all. 